Hi there, this is Further Maths, Year 12 Discrete Maths to be precise, and we're going to look today at some sorting algorithms. Um, now the sorting algorithms I've got in mind are obviously, well, first of all I should point out that this is based on the OCR version of um, A-level Further Mathematics. And the OCR Further Mathematics expects us, um, eventually at least, to do three times. They expect us to do bubble sorts. So we need to be able to do bubble sorts. We need to be able to do the shuttle sort, the shuttle sort. And the third one, which I'm not doing today because it's in year 13. So in year 13, we also have to do something called the quick sort. Now, if you're doing um, a different exam board, you might find that uh, you need other things or maybe, you know, not the uh, the quick sort, for instance, and bubble and shuttle are very common, and that's the ones we're going to look at today. So let's get on and do them. Um, the bubble sort. Um, there are these th the, these three rules we need to do. There's only one number list, then stop. Well, there'll never be one number, um, but there might be after a while. Uh, make one pass down the list, comparing numbers in pairs, and then do a little swap if you need to. And if no swaps have occurred, um, then you can stop. Otherwise, ignore that last um, element of the lesson. Return to step one. Look, it's always best if I just show you what to do. So there's the, there's the rules, but let's just do it. Now, what's it want me to do? It wants smallest numbers first. So put it into a numerical order. I tend to draw a line going down. Sometimes the lines, these numbers go across and you do it the other way around, but these numbers going down. So now it says basically, look, compare five and nine. Now, five and nine are in the right order. So I tend to just write them like that five and nine and the other numbers eight one four six can stay as they are and now i look at the nine and the eight and the nine and the eight swap because obviously they're in the wrong order so the eight and the nine do that and then the five stays there the one the four and the six now what now well i've got the nine and the one they're swapping as well one and nine and the reason well it's a bit weird this because what you think bubbles bubbles rise but this is called a bubble sort because this thing sinks to the ground and when I say it sinks down this biggest number sinks to the ground or I suppose you could think of it in the other way and say the smallest number will start rising up um, nine and four will also swap so I put this little cross whenever I, they uh, swap um, and you'll notice on that very first example I did a little five and a nine dashes just to show that they didn't swap it just stayed the same I did compare them I didn't doing much else um, and the six there and then lastly I've got the, um, the six and the nine are going to swap and you notice how I that's my first thing I'm just looking down this diagonal and then all the other numbers are exactly the same now that then is the end of the first pass because I've got down to the bottom there's nothing else to do now it does say here when you get down to it you can ignore the last number so I now know basically that nine is in the right place that nine is right I'm not going to worry about that ever again so I'll go back to the top five and eight are in the right order one four six now eight and one they're in the wrong order so one and eight five four six don't forget the nine but you know it's in the right place uh eight and four swapping and then lastly now lastly because i know the nine's in the wrong right place six and eight is now done and that is the end of the second pass but now I know the 8 and the 9 are in the right place, you see. So that's why you eventually, you do speed up this. 5 and the 1 are in the wrong order. 1 and 5, 4 and 6. And 8 and 9 are in the right place. Uh, 5 and 4, I have to swap. So that goes 4 and 5, 1 and 6. Don't forget the 8 and 9. And then lastly, I suppose I've got to check this five and six. Now, just because we can see they're in the right place, you still have to check one and four, eight and nine were in the right place already. So that's the end of the third pass. Now, you might be tempted to think, look, one, four, five, six, eight, nine, they're in the right order, I'll stop. Well, yeah, we can see that. A computer wouldn't see that. So the computer would go one and four. Well, they're in the right order. So we'll just leave those alone. Oh, by the way, we now know, before we knew 8 and 9 were in the right order, we now know that 6, 8, 9 are in the right order. Not only in the right order, in the right places as well. I can ignore them. So 1 and 4 is fine. 4 and 5, well, they're fine as well. 
four and five are fine. We'll put one. And I knew six, eight, and nine was in the right place. And because of six, eight, and nine are in the right place, I've got down to five. That's the end of that pass. Pass one, pass two, pass three. And this took four passes to do it. Four passes. Now, um, I get my students to do what I call a PCS table, a pass comparison swap table. And you'll notice sometimes you get asked for how many passes, um, how many comparisons and swaps are in different passes. So you'll notice if I look at this, the crosses are the swaps. So I've got one, two, three, four in the first pass, four swaps. And I actually had one comparison plus all of those. They had to be compared too before. I, so actually I write five here. In my second pass, I had one, two, three uh, swaps. And I reckon I had one additional comparison. So that's four. And then I had one, two. And I again, I had one extra. So that's three. And here there's just two swaps and none. And there wasn't, and that's it actually. There wasn't a fifth pass. Five, four, that's nine. Uh, 12, 14, I make that. hope I've done that right. And I get nine swaps. And that's what you sometimes need. You need to know how many swaps, how many comparisons. That is a bubble sort. Um, if I get a chance in a bit, I'll show you a second one. But before I do, let's show you the subtle shuttle sort. Now, this is different. It does the same job. It's trying to do the same job. Anyway, I've got a new bunch of numbers. And I'm going to... Up, there's the rules again. I'm just going to show you what you do. So draw a line. Now, remember, this is not the same as just now. So don't expect it to be. I look at six and three, the top two numbers. Do I want this in a numerical order? Yeah, so basically get a bit increase in order. So six and three, I look at those and I think they are in the wrong order. So I put them in the right order. Three and six, I put all the others, eight, two. You're probably thinking it's exactly the same as last time. But here's the thing. That is the end of the first pass. Boom, done. I just effectively, on this first pass, I make sure the first two numbers are in order. That's all I care about. First two numbers are in order. So now, second pass, I introduce the eight. Eight, I look at eight, and I immediately, look, having done that, I compare here with the number above it. Eight and six, well, they're in the right order. And because I already knew three and six are in the right order, I don't need to check three. That's done. And may sound weird, that is the end of the second pass. There it is. Boom. Now I introduce my two into this game. And you'll, you'll notice that I, I look at two and I'll look at the one above it again. So two and eight have to swap. So two and eight, there they are. Um, write the others around it. Four, one, seven. Now, because I swapped, I got to look up because I, you know, got to see where that two fits in. And the two and the six have to swap. So I write the three, I write the eight, the four, the one, the seven. Now, again, because I swapped it, I have to look above it. So the two and the three, and they swap as well. Two and three, and six and eight, and four and one and seven. Now, it may be a bit of a pain right in these. Very often in the exams, on bubble short sorts and shuttle sorts, they want what's called the end of pass arrangements. So they'll expect you to do this. And I should point out as well, there are easier ways of doing this. Well, quicker ways, not necessarily easier ways. But I'm trying to show you the mechanics of it. And then we can talk about quicker ways to do it, perhaps later. So then, anyway, I introduced last time that two. So this time I'm introducing the four. The four and the eight... Well, they swap. There they are. The six, the three, the two. And the one and the seven underneath it. Now, what do I do? I check the four above it because I swapped it. So they switch. Yeah, clearly do. Four and six. The three and the two above that. And the eight and the one and the seven. Now, the four and the three. Now, they don't swap. So that just stays the same. They've got three and four, three and four. Now, two, six, eight, one, seven. Now, because I didn't swap it, I'm allowed to stop. That's the end of the fourth pass. So I introduced last time um, this four from memory. So now I introduce this one. And the one obviously swaps with the eight, six, four, three, two going up. And then I have a seven. And uh, because I swapped, I compare and they obviously swap. And you can see this one's eventually going to go all the way up to the top. That's kind of why you can do some of this in your head. 
you get to a point where you can start predicting what's going to happen, how many swaps will take place, how many comparisons will take place. But you've got to have done that a few times just to see that you understand what's going on before I'd recommend trying to do it all in your head. Some people are very good at doing their head. This one also swaps one, two, three, four, six, eight, seven. Now that was in me introducing the one, so now I introduce the seven. Oh, that but I should really have said that's the end of the fifth pass. So I introduce the seven, they swap seven, eight, six, four, three, two, one, going up. And then six and seven, well, they don't swap, but I still have to write it six, seven. These numbers repeat themselves and then an eight there. And because I didn't swap on the shuttle sort, I can stop. And I just now count up. So what have I got? I've got um, in the first pass, I do a, um, three and six swapped. And therefore I also get a comparison. Then I get a comparison, but no swap here. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for how many crosses and how many um, lines of numbers almost on this one i seem to have got one two three swaps and that was it there was no additional comparisons this time i got two but there seems to be one additional comparison this time i got one two three four five all the way to the top so five of each and this time it's one swap and one additional comparison if I add these up, 2, 5, 8, um, 13, 15, I think I've done that right. And I've got 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, I reckon 12. Now, as to which one is best, I suppose that's up for debate, isn't it? You could argue that in certain orders, the shuttle sort is best. In other orders, the bubble sort is best. So anyway, um, look, I'd recommend you have perhaps another look at these. I've got um, an example of a bubble sort that I'd recommend you do. And in class, I'll give you the answers to those. So that's worth you having a practice of that. And then also, I'd like you to have a look at a second example of the shuttle sort. So you notice the last one was bubble sort. This one's now shuttle sort. So you might make sure you do those the right way around. There's more to do in class. So there's a couple of questions for you to have a play with. And what I'd also like you to look at um, is looking at, again, this idea of efficiency. We can use the, um, the number of swaps and comparisons to compare the different sort of methods. So if I just have a go at this, first of all, note that bubble sorts and shuttle sorts of quadratic order. Now, you may recall we wrote that last time this. This basically means they're quadratic order. And if you like, that implies that if I double the number of uh, numbers, it doesn't double the complexity. It times it by four because it's two squared. Um, now, here is a uh, question that perhaps we need to think about as well. Um, this is a bunch of numbers then. That is 4815625. Now, I, my suggestion is we should try to sort this using the bubble sort and short, sort it using the shuttle sort as well. And when we've done that, we can have a look at the PCS table. Now, I'm not going to, again, I've got uh, only got about a minute left, so I'm not going to do it now. But what I would, again, suggest is one thing you can do, I'm not suggesting this uh, at all, but you might do an example where, for instance, you end up with the bubble sort. Um, I'll write bubble up here. You might do it and you find you need um, uh, 20, uh, 19 comparisons and you need um, 12 swaps. I've just completely made those numbers up. It could be complete rubbish, but um, and but then you do the same thing with shuttle sorts and you end up with the same bunch of numbers. It requires, I don't know, 18 comparisons. So only think that's better, but it might be 14 swaps to do it. Now, of course, now it all depends on the time. How much does how much time does it take to do a comparison? How much time does it take to do a swap? And I suppose I could you know give you some times for the comparison and the swap, and then you can work out which is the the, the quickest of the two. So that's the next stage of this. And uh, again, we're not going to do it now. We're out of time. 
um, but bubble and shuttle sorts were really important. They come up loads. And remember, in year 13, you get a third one called the quicksort. Thank you very much.